welcome back to this channel once again um, I'm again here uh, with another topic in sub file so which is for beginners right now so here is uh, for reading change or uh, reading next change records in sub file for beginners so I, I, I just created our program where I'm showing you how we can read the change records in the sub file so here yeah, this is the program so just call this so here you can see that uh, here you can do X on any sub file uh, record so basically if I don't take X okay so I can see nothing is happening so here F3 is working so just don't see this program uh, we can see this program also for this one just call this program just press enter okay page on page, page up so here you can see that um, a simple thing is uh, if I took option C nothing is happening for example I took option X um, for example one X I can press enter and then you can see uh, I go to the browse employee info screen so if I took F12 I come back so if I took X X X X was already there so if I for example I just pressing enter I would be seeing the second employee info the third one and this one so if I press enter now it won't let me see anything else okay because x was already there so if i have to just remove this one then take x okay just take after left after so you can see that once i took uh once i took x on this uh these sub file records i can go to the browser screen so how i'm doing that so how i'm reading that uh getting the information about that which record user uh, would have selected by using x or anything else so let's see the program so the first thing is the initialization thing where i am loading the sub file so this is the loading part and then i am displaying the sub file here okay this one and then I am processing the keyboard keys whatever user presses so if user pressed F3 so I will be exiting from the program if user presses enter so it might chances that user would have taken any option while pressing enter or it he uh, uh, user presses uh, user simply presses the enter so if user simply presses the enter in that case also we will be going to uh, read the change records so in that case we won't be getting any change records so for example user took uh, user changed any records uh, means for example uh, selected any records you can say a uh, user took x on x or any other option on any record then we will be reading the change record for that of that sub file format okay so basically what we are doing we are reading that sub file format sflrfmt1 using the read c operation so read changed record so we are basically using the read change record okay read c operation on that sub file format to read the uh, changed uh, record of the sub file okay change means uh, so for for example on that option is a is a field which which can be changed which is defined in both mode and we took x on that so means we change the value of that uh, option for that particular sub file record which we selected from blank to x or x to c or anything else x to a or e to blank or x to blank so we are changing the values okay so we are reading the change records only for example user would have changed the second record so we will be only reading the second record here using read c operation so we won't be reading any record for example we would have taken x on the first time and um, then we took C or something else and we are reading basically the change records okay now once we read the change records we will be reading in loop so that we can read that 
the next change record also so for example user would have changed more than one record on the sub file or you can say user would have taken the option or selected more than one records on the sub file you either using option x or any other option then we are basically reading the multiple change records so how we can do that so using the same function read c of read c or uh, read c on that sub file format so we basically we are doing that in the loop so we are reading till not percentile end of file okay not percentile end of file means here sub file not the physical file okay then i am reading the change equal of that sub file format again in the loop so that i would be getting all the change records in my list and then i am doing the processing based on those records so let's what i did what i'll do i'll compile this program again uh, with debug vista so so that i can debug this program and we'll show you how this read c work or how we can uh, read the change or the next change records of the sub file let's grdbg pgl24 okay chaiyas chaiyas set the breakpoint at line number one then call this program call pgm24 okay so now the first thing is so the first thing in the program would be the initialization subroutine if defined so and the the main thing here is we do not need to call this program it is by default called by by default called by the os okay so we don't need to call this uh, subroutine you can say so sorry subroutine i just used program here uh, uh, instead of subroutine so this is a subroutine so we don't need to call this subroutine in our program means we do not do not need to write exsr execute subroutine initialization injsr okay so it will be automatically uh, called at the first instance when the program uh, ran executed so here i am doing the loading part so we are basically loading the sub file format sub file format okay or you can say sub file so here i am setting these indicators to off which is for displaying the sub file and this is for uh, that limit sfl page uh, as uh, the rn should not reach to the sfl size value for example sfl size is defined as 9999 so we would not be loading more than that record because this is a load all sub file and that will hold maximum up to 9999 records or the value specified in the sfl size keyword so here i am reading the records from the student file one by one and i am updating the rrn and i am writing the fee of sub file fields from the file fields okay and i am initializing option as blank writing sub file control uh, sub file format okay so here i am setting the indicator 10 to all on because now i can uh, i have at least one record in the sub file format which is loaded and i can display the sub file so indicator 10 is basically associated with the sfl display keyword so which must be acti activated if uh, if there is at least one record uh, loaded in sub file so here i am reading all the records in loop and i am loading all the records in the sub file format from the student table okay now if rn1 is greater than zero i am setting this indicator to on indicator 44 is basically used with the sfl end keyword so i use the sfl end keyword uh, it is not required uh, for you if you use sfl end with your sub file then you can do this uh, step else you can leave or skip this step now the loading is complete so here I'm just uh, uh, passing the SFL SCR value which is zero currently. So SFL is scroll value once I press enter then I would be getting the minimum current 
are end of that page or the or the sub file on which I am. For example, I'm on second page and a sub file uh, page size is, for example, three. So on the second page, the minimum current R and of that sub file would be four. So we will be getting the four value here, and that will be evaluated to this field, which is the defined in the sub file uh, control format. And I'm then writing the footer and executing the control format. Okay. Now I can see the sub file is loaded. I can do page up and page down here, and I can see current sub file R and zero. Once I press enter, I can see the updated value. So if I'm on first page. I would be seeing the one, the RRN of the first record on this page. If I have, if I am on second page, I would be seeing the RRN on RRN of this record, which is four, basically on that page. So this is the thing. I'm on first page now. So for example, now uh, now I can now I'm here to show you the change call. For example, I press enter. I didn't selected any sub file record. Okay. So I'm going to the process keyboard. Uh, subroutine so here I am reading the change record in the sub file format okay so I didn't get any record and I am exiting from the loop okay so I am again displaying the same thing now I can see the current sub file and which is one okay because I am on the first page so for example I took X or not I'm, I'm not taking X I'm taking CC on this so I am selecting, for example, I am taking C on one record, okay. So I am selecting only one record. So I am now, I am reading the change record. So I just selected the first record. So the option was C. So I am only performing this thing when option is X. So in case if option is not X, I am exiting from this. I am reading the change record again. And now I am not getting any other change call and I am exiting from the because I took C twice so that's why uh, it uh, went twice into the loop now so for example example I took X here and then pressing enter you can see So I'm reading the change called so if option is X so I'm getting the employee number which is one so I selected the first record and then I'm changing with that employee number in info file and if the record is found I'm evaluating these uh, display file fields okay else I'm evaluating blank or zero whatever the affiliate type is then I'm checking if F12 is off then only I'm writing the dummy record format why I am doing that? I am writing the dummy. Dummy is uh, having the blank value. So because because uh, I am first at first place, I am displaying the sub file uh, screen. So in case if I am not writing the dummy record, I would be seeing the sub file records there because that are already written. Okay. So that's why I am doing this. Then I am executing formatting the browser screen. Okay. Now I can see the browser screen where I'm showing the address and age. So if I took F12 here, I would be leaving from this loop. Okay. So I have left from this loop. Now I'm reading the change record again. So I'm not getting any change record here again. Okay. So now I'm passing that thing and then, then I'm just playing the file. Okay. Now, for example, I took X on this one, the second record, and the third and the fifth record, and I have made that first record as blank, so that is also changed. Since here, uh, now, for example, I press enter. So this is the first record which was blank for that employee number is one so I'm not processing this one so I'm only processing when user took option uh, X so the option is X this is on the second record so employee number is second so I can see the values 
here. So if I took F12 again, so I'm lo le leaving this loop. Now I'm again reading the change records. I can see there is one more change record, which is the fifth record. Uh, there I took option X. So employee number would be five. So I am again changing and getting the okay the required information from that info table. So if I take F12, so here I am seeing now I won't be getting any change record anymore, and then I can see this thing. So here we saw that how we can uh, just took F3. So. How we can uh, read the changed uh, records or the next change records in the sub file so here basically I am uh, using this read C op code or read C operation code you can say and reading the change uh, change record in the sub file format till not percentile end of file so if I have to read the only one change record I can simply use read C SFL RFMT and if percentile found simply and in case if I have to read all the change records in the change record in the next change record I have to do this in the loop so read C then do while not percentile end of file so read C on the sub file format okay and then again read C on sub file format and then end to and inside in between that I can perform my uh, processing whatever I want to do for that particular selected sub file record or the change sub file record you can say so this is the uh, thing which I just want to uh, highlight that how how we can read a change read the change call or the next change call in the sub file. So this is just for beginners. So that's the thing. Uh, thank you and have a nice time.